What up crew? Let's make a 3D printed pocket trumpet stand. So I first started out with a 3D printed model of an octopus. Why an octopus, you may ask? I don't know. I had a dream of a yellow octopus. Maybe it's some sort of reference to the Beatles. And that became the foundation of this project. Now, I've already printed this large actual model a while ago on a different printer before I had a camera. But since you all love to see fast moving machines making stuff, I'm remaking a similar version of this model just for you. This is being printed on a Jokerbot, and although I sped it up, I'm keeping the actual sound since some people enjoyed that from previous videos. Besides, we're all tired of the chipmunk sounds taking over YouTube. So how do you get the measurements of the inside of this bell? Well, scanning it is not going to come out as well, and it's pretty expensive. So I just took some putty, stuck it in, and then just took the measurements of that and put it into Fusion 360. After making half the object, I used the revolve function and then I had my cone. Then off to Mesh Mixer where I brought the octopus and the cone together. The cone is actual size while the octopus is small, so I'm gonna scale it down just so you get an idea what they look like in proportion. Okay, so I have to be honest, when I was printing, the print failed. This happens a lot, and it failed at about this time. So, I'm going to stop the print so that we can just continue on like I had to do. So it didn't finish the top of the head. Actually, it didn't really do the tip of the cone, but I didn't do that on this print. So, the best thing to do is get a 3D pen. Now, one of the best things about these 3D pens is they're basically a detailed hot glue gun. All we have to do is insert the filament and you're ready to start printing. This pen is by Polaroid. I'm not sponsored or anything by these guys. It was just one that I found for 35 bucks at a 3D printing show about two years ago. And it's great. It lets you fix so many problems that originally would be completely trash if the printer had failed. You can move the filament and have it go faster or slower with these two buttons here. And if you want to stop it, you can just press it like this and then mold the print. It's a little hot, but deal with it. And another tool that I absolutely love are my fingernail clippers. These are Rite Aid and it has a rectangle base, so it's a lot stronger. They're perfect for cutting fingernails, but also for clipping little pieces of the print off to clean it up, plus any other things you need to cut. It's basically a Leatherman you can bring on an airplane. Cool, let's keep printing. In the beginning, I like to throw away this original material. Here we go. Doesn't matter if it gets messy, we'll polish it up later. And there we go. So now that we have our friend printed and molded the way we want to, with the little detail in his legs, and the ability to put the mouthpieces inside of the arms, just like this, and his head fits the trumpet perfectly on it, I gave it a coat of primer, and we're gonna sand it and give it a nice coat of yellow. This actual print took about 25 hours and the legs were all flat. I took a heat gun and warmed up the two legs to hold the mouthpieces in the air. I also printed a little friend. This is primed with a couple coats of gray so that it can fill up most of the major gaps. I don't know why I'm in the mood for yellow so much. It was John that wore yellow on the Sgt. Pepper's album. I think Ringo wore like pink. Um, I don't know, it just seemed to come to me in that dream. And look, there's mango. Oh, and I apologize early if the fountain noise is making you have the urge to piss. Mango came with the house. I have another goldfish called Yoohoo, but he was being shy today. Mango and Yoohoo are the same names of Sir Charles Barkley's dogs. 
And as you can see, I filled a lot of the bottom of this with the green filament from the 3D pen just to make it a lot stronger and more centered in its weight. Also the top here. All right, now that the paint's dry, let's cut the base for it. I'm not painting the bottom or the top of the stand because it's gonna be covered in felt. This way it won't scratch the trumpet and the glue will stick better. And 10 points for having the exact amount of materials needed. Cutting this exact shape with the print glued on is going to be tricky, so I'm tracing around it with a pen. And voila! I'm just putting some cling film down so that the glue doesn't stick to the board. Let's hope this lines up properly. I also put an F in the front so I know exactly where he's gonna sit. A perfect fit, two more points. Beautiful. Then the glue up. I find that wood glue is great on polylactic acid rather than super glue. Some sort of chemical reaction happens when the super glue touches the printed filament and it doesn't stick well and discolors the outside surface. Another handy tool is the Rockler brush for painting that glue around and keeping your fingers clean. All right, let's glue this sucker. Now repeat the same process for the top part. Here I'm trimming off the excess so it lines up nicely. And remember to always wrap up and protect your horn. A pocket trumpet, for those of you wondering, is the same as a regular B-flat trumpet, but just coiled tighter. It gives it a more New Orleans kind of sound, I think, and it's great for traveling with. All right, it got a little cold and dark outside, so we'll just finish it off in here. And let's give him some eyes. Cool. Hit that subscribe button if you don't want to hear me play anymore. I don't blame you. I'll put this guy on Thingiverse if you want to download it yourself. And let's end out with a quote. So, for example, these have a great backing with a huge rectangle for a lot of leverage. Compared to these little guys who are just uh, like, what is this? There's no room to even grab. It, the only thing they're good for is you can take them apart really easily and throw them away.